Donc, on commence avec le conditionnel quoi passé. Le conditionnel passé, comment ça se fait On a être ou avoir. Avoir au présent ou bien au conditionnel passé. Conditionnel, le conditionnel présent. Plus le participe, le participe passé. Vert égal le conditionnel passé. Un small mathematics. Can you follow that? How to form le conditionnel passé? You conjugate, you write. Other être or avoir form of form, conditionnel présent, the conditional present form, present conditional form. And then you add the past participle form of the verb. And then you get conditionnel passé. Is that okay? We did the conditionnel présent. Come avoir, we do. You aurait, tu aurais, elle, elle aurait. Nous aurions, vous auriez, elle, elle, aurait. That is par avoir. And then être. Je serai, tu serais, elle, elle serait, nous serions. Vous seriez, elle, elle serait. Is that not it? So, that is for être. Conditionnel présent. If the verb is avoir, then you use avoir in the conditional present form. And then you add the past participle form of the verb. Then you get the correct form of it. Is that okay? So you see the example here. For instance, you want to conjugate the verb manger. Manger in the conditionnel party. You just say, j'aurais, j'aurais mangé. J'aurais mangé. J'aurais mangé me for. Equivalent in English, how will you translate it? You're a manger. Tell me this one. You're a manger. Tell me this one. Encore? You're a manger. This is the être. This shows that the verb manger is avoir verb. It's one of the avoir verb. You get it? You're a manger. But if we do être, then you can say, you serai. Sorti. Je serai sorti. This one is all. It's être verb. Le verb être. On doit conjuguer sorti avec être. À cause de cela, on doit dire je serai sorti. And I put this in bracket because if you are a man talking, you don't bring the e. If you are a lady, then you add this. You get it. Hey, so you're manger. What does it mean? It's conditional. I, I would have eaten, or I should have eaten. I should have eaten. And this one, yesterday, sort. You remember we did the present conditional. Why well, I was saying that? How many of you joined the discussion on Zoom when we had the present condition? How many of you were there? You see. I was saying that ye serai, the equivalent is I should be. Just ye serai. And tu serai, you would be. Il est serai. He or she would be. Nous serions. We should be. Vous seriez. You would be. You get it? Il est serai. They would be. And then avoir. J'aurais. Jure, I should, I should have. That is the, the verb to have. I should have, which is the present conditional. 
You get it. <clears throat> Yore, that is, I should have. Tu ore, you would have. In el ore, he or she would have. Okay. Hey. And then nous, quoi? Orion, nous orion. Nous orion, we should have. We should have. And then vous seriez, you would have. And then il ou elle aurait they, they would they would have. You should follow it all. You are not talking. Why is that? Hey. So that is a avoir. But if it's être, this one, the être is to be. So if it just say it, it means I should be. To say it, you would be. Not have. The other one is avoir, to have. Now we are talking about present position. But when you finish all that and you come here, this is past. And for you to get the past conditional, you, I'm saying that first of all, some verse in French are conjugated with avoir, some two with être. So that's what I've written here. You need the être or avoir in the present conditional form. This is present conditional form, ore. It's conditional form. And then you add the past participle form of the verb, which is what? Manje, this is past participle. Do you get the point? Past participle form of it. Here too is the past participle form of it. But you can't bring steren here and say, yes, sere manje. Because this verb is avoir, conjugated with avoir. We have a list of verbs that are conjugated with etre. And uh, I don't know whether last time I told you it's with the term as Mrs. Bandata. I will take you to when you move on to passé composé very soon. Okay, passé composé. Then you just say, you see Mrs. Bandata where the M stands for Monte, R, Reste, S, Sorti, Bandata, B, Beni, A, Ale, N, Naître, D, Descend, A, Entrer, R. Retourner, retourner, and then T, tomber. Okay. Vanda, tam. And then the A, arrivé. M, mourir. Et P, parti. So these are uh, être verbs. They are all conjugated with être. And they are compounds. And they are compounds. What I mean by their compound is that if the V is conjugated with être, if you see that the verb revenir, re, you see that inside the revenue, you see the new inside. So the compound of this is a compound. Do you get a point? You have to this here, revenue. And if you have the verb, the venue is also a compound of what venue. So if you follow the same pattern, you consider that one to, to be all. Etre verb. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. So, you understand it this way. That is how conditionnel uh, passé is formed. Yeah. So if you look at it, I sh should have eaten. And then this one is yesterday sorti. I should have walked. I should have walked. And then here, yesterday sorti. I should have. I should have. Gone out. Do you get a point? I should have gone out. So after taking you through this, then you should be able to know the other one. I don't know, last time we discussed some, I gave you a sentence like this, and I asked you to transform it to the uh, probable or improbable condition. Why I said, you see, see, yeah. I've written with that, they see. Yeve à la à la noce Yelu donne Yelu donnerait si Yeve à la noce Yelu donnerait un cadeau We saw something like this last week or so This is uh, if cross, C 
si je vais à la nord, je lui donnerai un cadeau. What are you How will you translate it to English? Si je vais à la nord, je lui donnerai un cadeau. What to be the valley? Hein? Ça veut dire quoi? Can somebody translate this into English so that you get understanding? Again, I were you not in class, we saw something like this. When we met on Zoom, yes. If I go to the wedding, if I go to the wedding, I'll give him a present or a gift. Very good. So now we want the we can see the tenses that we have here. We have two major tenses here. This what tense is ve, ye ve, ve. What tense is this? Present tense. And then donere, what tense is this? Future time or tense. Is that not it? Yeah. So now we are moving on to conditional. And then if you come here, I want to change this one to uh, improbable condition. This is what is called probable condition. The name given today is probable condition. And probable condition is also known as type one. Type one, probable condition. So you can equally change the same structure to type two, which is improbable condition. Then you use more conditional structure. So you see, if Yale à la nose, il allait à la nose, hein? il est lui, donnerait, dans le café, il est lui donnerait un cadeau. This one is key. This one is conditionnel présent. And this is what? Look at the difference. And this one is, what test is it? We saw this last week. What test is it? See Yale, à la nose. Yale, what test is it? Hey, we should be seen also. We saw this last week. Eh? See Yale, what test is this? Wait. You saw it. Wait. L'imparfait, très bien. C'est l'imparfait. Imperfect. Didn't we discuss l'imparfait last week? Why we discuss it? Hein? You saw it. That's l'imparfait. So l'imparfait, you can see that for you to get it in type two. For you to get the type two, it's see? And the name given today is improbable condition. Improbable. Condition, improbable condition, and it is also term as type two. Type two. So, if you à la nose, you will donate un cadeau. If I went to the wedding, if I went to the wedding, uh -huh, you complete it. It will be all. No, I should. Uh -huh, I should do all. I should give him or her a gift. If I went to the wedding, I should give him or her a gift. See, so that's a type two. And then we can do this one, same this thing to construct a three. But once we have not done, uh, look, we have not done the plus que parfait. I shouldn't disturb you. We need to do the plus que parfait. After the plus que parfait, then we move on to all ta trait plus que parfait. After the plus que parfait, then we can talk about ta trait, which is the impossible condition. You get it? It's called the impossible condition. So type one, probable condition, type two, improbable condition, and type three. For you to get type three, you need to know le conditionnel passé, and then you need to know le plus que parfait. So once you know the plus que parfait conditionnel passé, 
le conditionnel passé. Then you can form the type 3. So the structure of this way, if I went to the wedding, I should give him again. The type 3 will be if I had, if I had all come to the wedding, I should have given him or her a gift. So we need to know how do you say had gone in French. That will lead us to look at parfait. And then I should have, this is where we say we started, what I wrote, remember, I should have. You remember that, that is conditionnel passé. So once we finish, we do the plus que parfait, then we move on to type three, which is the possible condition. So you need to understand up to this point. If you don't understand, you will let me know. You get it? Yeah. And uh, we will do le passé composé before we come and do plus que parfait. But don't forget, I've introduced you to the conditionnel passé. And for you to get the type three, we need plus que parfait plus the conditionnel passé. You agree? Yeah. So you say, how do you say, if I had come, if I had come, si j'étais allé, do you get it? Si tu étais allé, si étais allé, si nous étions allé à la noce, à la noce, nous aurions Hein? Nous aurions donné, nous aurions lui donné, nous aurions lui donné un cadeau. That is the point. That is the translation I said. If we had come to the wedding, we should have all given him or her a gift. Do you get the point? If we're able to get the two structures very well, then you can say that you are somehow well placed in tenses. Do you get it? Don't miss them. We'll try and get it. If I ask you to change this to this, this, and that order, you should move. Okay, si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez poser. Oui, avez-vous des questions? Si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez poser avant de continuer. Oui, avez-vous des questions? Oui. Il était allé, plus que parfait. Mm -hmm. C'est ça. Si était allé à la noce, oui, c'est ça. Il aurait lui donné un cadeau. Si était allé à la noce, il aurait lui donné un cadeau. Il aurait lui donné un cadeau. You get the point. Hmm. But we have not done the plus que parfait. Once we, finish, we do the plus que parfait, then I will introduce you to that place. But I have to introduce you to those who are following. You can know that we have done it already. But we do that. Then after that, I will take you to the phrase conditionnel, proprement dit. The phrase conditionnel. You get the point. Then you know all that you are referring to. So try and understand that to this point. Très bien. Okay, those on Zoom, do you have any questions? Oh, no, so if you have any question, you can ask. Si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez poser. Avez-vous des questions ou bien c'est bien compris? Avez-vous des questions? On vient de discuter le conditionnel passé. OK? Le conditionnel passé. Et des phrases, la phrase conditionnelle, il y a une phrase conditionnelle comme si il allait à la noce, il lui donnerait un cadeau. And we term that as well, improbable condition, type 2. OK. And I, I have just introduced you to type 3, but you pause there because we need to know plus que parfait. And then you can, before you can hold, construct meaningful tenses or sentences using the type three or the improbable condition in the language. So if you don't have any question, do well to understand to this point. That how you type one, <laughs> type two, then the final one will be type three. Bon. Avez-vous des questions?